Good morning, and welcome to Sandy Springs Christian Church's online worship service. We're so glad that you've gathered here with us today on this Pentecost Sunday. I want to extend a special welcome to those who might be visiting today. We're glad that you're here with us. Do hope you enjoy this time of worship with us. We always love to know that you're here, uh, so please feel free to check in on our Facebook page. Send me an email. My email address is listed below. I uh, would enjoy hearing from you and would uh, enjoy trying to answer any questions you might have about our ministry here at Sandy Springs Christian Church. Today is a celebratory day in so many different ways. Um, we are recognizing our graduates today. Uh, you also will notice in the background that I have a red rosebud uh, in honor of a birth in our midst of our congregation. Uh, pleased to share with you that Derek Jude Harple was born on May 24th to Travis and Emily Harple. Uh, he weighed in at seven pounds, was 11 ounces, and 20 inches long. And so we do certainly celebrate with the Harples. Uh, big congratulations to them. I understand everyone's doing well, and we're so pleased to hear that good news. We do recognize our graduates. Uh, we are so sorry that many of them have not been able to go through those sort of normal rituals they might go through at this time of year. But we do certainly want to celebrate with them on this occasion. We have three in our midst. Uh, one a high school grad and two other college grads and so uh, today I want to make mention of them and uh, where they're graduating from and sort of what their plans are next uh, at least at this point. So uh, first our, our high school grad was Amos Belay. Uh, Amos of course was a Tucker for uh, several years and transferred at the end and uh, graduated from Pope. Uh, we celebrate with he and his family on this special occasion. We do have the bittersweet news that he and his family will be moving out to Arizona to be with some family out there. And so we pray well wishes for them as they move on to their next chapter in their lives. Uh, and we will miss them and look forward to hearing from them, even though they may be at a distance. We do have, of course, uh, two college grads in our midst. Uh, many of you know Evan Bench, Teresa Bench's son, who did graduate from Truett McConnell University uh, with a degree in general business and a concentration in finance and accounting. Uh, I understand that Evan will be pursuing a job in his field, and so we celebrate with them and we wish him the best of luck as he moves on to his next uh, venture and next chapter of his life. And finally this morning, we celebrate with Bailey Mooney, who graduated from TCU. Go Frogs! Uh, she did graduate with a degree in political science, and she is planning to pursue a graduate degree, a master's degree in public policy. Uh, and so we do celebrate again with the Mooney family as well. Uh, and all the hard work that uh, she and, and all these graduates have put in over the years. So congratulations to you all. Let's give them a warm clap at home, uh, celebrate with them, and if, when you are able to see them, uh, wish them the best. You might send an email or a note to them. I know they would appreciate that very much. Finally this morning, as we do each and every week, we light a candle to be reminded of God's presence in our lives. And so as we prepare our hearts and minds for worship today, I'd invite you to find your candle and to light those candles with me. Good morning, Sandy Springs Christian Church from your recent Horn Fog graduate. Let's begin with our call to worship today. In one spirit, we are one body. Jews are Greeks, slaves are free, indigenous people, and later come to this land. The body does not consist of one member, but of many. If one member suffers, all suffer with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice with it. We are the body of Christ and individually members of it. Led by the Spirit, we claim our membership to the one body of Christ. Now let us lift our voices in praise as Susan leads us in our opening hymn. Thank you. 
I love getting special gifts, don't you? This is a special gift that I got many years ago from a group of campers at Camp Christian. It's a wind chime that they made. And the fact that they made it is what makes it so special, but it is a beautiful wind chime. And when the wind comes through, it makes this really pretty noise. That's one of the best kinds of gifts, right? The gifts that are special, that are full of meaning, that are beautiful to look at, but also do something very beautiful. Now today in the church is a special day. We call it Pentecost Sunday, but some people may call it the birthday of the church. Today is a day that we celebrate, and it is a time when we remember when the first group of people were gathered together and they became the church. Now people were gathered together with the disciples to have a giant festival. Lots of people were there. They came from all over, so they spoke different languages. They looked different, and probably was a very big, beautiful celebration. All of a sudden, there was this gust of wind and everybody was filled with the Holy Spirit. When they became filled with the Holy Spirit, they not only felt the Spirit inside of them, but they saw some pretty amazing things. There was fire above people's heads. They could hear and understand what everybody was saying, but they were still talking in different languages. And after that moment, they all were just filled with the love that they knew only came from Jesus. Now after that festival, after that time when they became filled with the Spirit, people started to gather together in groups. They would talk about Jesus, they would learn about Jesus, and then they would go out and they would share Jesus with other people. And that was the start of the church. And that is why we call this Sunday Pentecost Sunday when we remember that story. Right now, if you were to drive past our church, you would see that it is this big, beautiful church. But we know that there is much more to that church. The people that belong to that church are what makes it so special. Every one of us is filled with the Holy Spirit. And when we are all together, we can do some pretty amazing things. Now, right now, I know we're not able to be together. And believe me, we look forward to that day when we can come and worship together and sing and just praise God. And while it can't happen right now, we know that God is still moving through us. The Holy Spirit is still in us and we are all still doing amazing things for God. Today, when you remember the birthday of the church, remember how great it is to be filled with that spirit. Remember that that spirit is what helps you to share God and to share Jesus's love with other people. Let us go to God in a word of prayer. In these days of knowing and not knowing, we, like the buds on the trees, are eager to burst forth into the world. As we do so, help us to do so gradually, loving God, 
gently caring for our neighbor as ourselves. And we'd be reminded on this day of Pentecost that the Spirit is given to us all, making us one body, and that every member of that body matters. From the unborn child to those with lines of life lived etched upon their hands and faces, to those whose immune systems are compromised, all are your beloved, whose care we are blessed to bear. Today, we especially continue to seek blessing upon those who have answered a call to care for us in our times of physical healing, no matter our opinion, our ideology, our hardship. These we hold in our care as neighbors. Help us to hear that caring for one another is your command on our lives. Open our ears to hear the tragedy in this time of coronavirus and not only our own anxiety and grief that may come on blustering words and tired rhetoric. Instead, let us think on how we will emerge from this, making the world a better place. Instead, let us think on what kindness, however small, we might offer someone else. Instead, let us remember that our life is not our own, but belongs to you. O God, in these times in particular, we carry with us both the blessings and burdens of so many. Today we celebrate the birth of new babies, specifically that of Derek Judd Harple, born to Travis and Emily Harple just earlier this week. We celebrate with graduates, especially Evan Bench, Bailey Mooney, and Amos Belay, and for their tremendous accomplishments. We grieve with them that they were not able to mark this time with normal rituals of walking across a stage, but celebrate with them the joy of all they have done during these last several years. We also, of course, carry with us anguish this day at the death of George Floyd and pray for a day when your justice might rain down that we might actually all be one. We carry with us worries those we may not be able to physically see, for those who are locked away from us for both their safety and our own, for those who are grieving alone during this time. We lift up to you these joys and concerns we carry in our hearts and minds, both silent and aloud at this time. O God, help us today to remember that we are indeed one, and both your command to us and our promise to you to love our neighbor as ourselves. For we pray these things in the name of your Son, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Today's reading comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 4 through 13. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge, according to the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit, who allocates to each one individually just as the Spirit chooses. 
For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, through though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free. We were all made to drink of one Spirit. Here ends the reading inspired by God. May God grant us wisdom and courage for interpretation. Well, over these last several weeks, my family has discovered many new activities we now are enjoying together. I taught my kids how to play my favorite card game from the Midwest, known as Euchre, which we now ritually play on Friday evenings. We've all chipped in on making new meals, trying out new recipes, with so much cooking that we're doing around our home. But the thing my children have enjoyed discovering most is, of all things, the art of fishing. There's a small pond in the neighborhood across from ours where we've gone several afternoons to fish and to spend time together, which, of course, is also the reason that bait has become such a popular topic in our household. We started with hot dogs, which was good for catching small brim, but it didn't take long for us to start discussing more natural prey for larger fish like night crawlers and minnows. Last weekend, we ventured down to the coast for a couple of days to see my brother and his family, whom we'd not seen for quite some time. Of course, the bait shops along the ocean front weren't advertising night crawlers and minnows, but rather shrimp and small pink fish. As a result, we didn't just catch fish, but also stingrays and other unidentifiable creatures from the deep. Although, when the eel showed up on the end of Harrison's line, I was done for the day. As you know, when anything shows up that looks like a snake, I'm out. You can imagine how everyone thought it was hilarious when I squealed, attempting to cut it off the line. Of course, more than anything, though, Harrison really wanted to catch the dolphins that swam some 100 yards off the pier. Having just completed a project at school on them, Clara immediately identified them as bottlenose dolphins, telling us everything about their habitat, why they swim together, and of course about the predators and their prey, which immediately sent Harrison off to the bait shop that he might catch one of them. Obviously, Clara didn't think that was very funny. The experience, though, reminded me of something she said while she was working on that project. Daddy, did you know that if there are not enough fish for the dolphins to eat, they will die? And if there are not enough dolphins for sharks and other predators to eat, well, then they will die. Did you know that they all rely on one another? That's amazing. It is, I said, suddenly amazed myself in that moment by God's amazing creation. And I'm not really sure why her words struck me so. After all, they are as fundamental to existence as any others, the basics of ecology, if you will. I can't help but wonder if it's because we're only now rediscovering just how connected everything is to some degree. Or at least we certainly are in our household. As my wife said early on, when your home overnight turns into a church, a school, a grocery store, among other things, well, things change. People take on new roles and responsibilities. Expectations, they shift. You begin to discover that we don't just want to be with one another. Rather, we fundamentally depend on each other. On Wednesday night here at Sandy Springs Christian Church, we had our night with Nathan. Not here in the building, of course, but by way of Zoom. It was an opportunity for many of us to see one another, to talk about all the things we've been experiencing during this pandemic. What Marion and I had failed to do before scheduling it, however, was to double check our calendars. Turns out Marion had her own church Zoom meeting at the same time, which just so happens to be right in the middle of Clara's bedtime routine, too. So Marion and I looked at one another, and then at Harrison. He looked back at us like we were crazy. 
And then he proceeded to say, fine, I'll put her to bed. Sure enough, by the time we came out of our meetings, Claire was in her bed, quiet, lights off. Our 11-year-old son had put together his, or put to bed his eight-year-old sister without any help from us for the very first time. Of course, she actually followed his directions. Although I suppose I shouldn't have been surprised. They're both making breakfast and lunch for one another at times, something they never really did all that much before. Marion, too, is doing things she never imagined, like cutting my hair, for instance. I'm even figuring out how to do handyman projects around the house I never would have dreamed of taking on. And it's not just in our households. It's the same in the church, too. Overnight, staff members have learned new technology they never thought they'd learn, becoming online worship producers, discussing things like lighting and sound and, and video quality. Church members have become shepherds to care for the greater flock, calling on one another regularly, ensuring that no, one, no need goes unanswered. Individuals without the official title have become deacons and elders, preparing and serving communion on Sunday mornings in their homes. The point is, people have had to use gifts they never thought they had to ensure the ongoing well-being of others. What was once perhaps perceived as optional, we now recognize as essential. What was once a role you'd never considered taking on is now more critical than ever to be the greater body. Turns out Clara's discovery of how every creature relies on the other is not just ecological, no, it's biblical. And we find it most clearly in the letter Paul writes to the people of Corinth we've read again today. Now, there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. Which I think we hear differently today, not only because of this time period in which we're living, but also because, well, we were so skeptical of larger bodies before, weren't we? I mean, just think about it. The government, large institutions, businesses, they weren't exactly who we thought about relying on. And group work didn't exactly have the highest of praise. We preferred one person come up with the idea or one person make the decision, even if everyone else disagreed. But what we've come to realize once again, which Paul reiterates in our reading today, is that the truth is we've had it wrong all along. I'm not saying that we should trust implicitly every large organization. No, what I'm saying is that whether we like one another or not, we are all part of the body. And every member of that body matters. Notice, Paul doesn't say in our reading, some receive the Spirit, or to a few are given gifts. Rather, he says, to each is given the Spirit, and the body is one of which all are members. Elsewhere, when the disciples are gathered behind locked doors, Jesus doesn't say to them, if you'd like the Spirit, it's yours, or I invite you to accept the Spirit. Rather, he commands of all of them, receive the Spirit. Even at that first Pentecost, the text does not read that the Spirit rained down as flaming tongues on some. No, it says that the Spirit came upon them all and everyone understood one another. They became one. In other words, being part of the body isn't an invitation. It's a directive. Receiving the Spirit isn't an option. It's who we already are. 
being connected to all of creation isn't just a good idea. It's a matter of life and death. Which, if you think about it, changes everything. Does it not? As our country begins to reopen, there is a great deal of conversation right now about when churches should reopen. In fact, it's the conversation among all my colleagues right now. After all, if, if big box stores and tattoo parlors and bowling alleys can reopen in person, then well, why can't the church? And trust me, I, I want the church to meet in person again more than anyone else. I know what's at stake. I live it every day. But the questions we ask as the church as it relates to opening our doors to the public are different than those being asked by politicians. After all, our first consideration is never economics, but rather faithfulness. And if we follow Jesus, whose first priority was to the most vulnerable, widows and orphans, the poor, and yes, the sick, then should not that be our first priority, too? Or to put it differently, just because we can, does that mean we should? Or to put it in Paul's words, if we are in fact one body of which all are an important part, are we not reliant upon one another to ensure that we keep as many people as safe as possible for as long as reasonably possible? I agree with our president that the church is essential insofar as it is the means by which God's love is, as God's love is shared with the world. But for me, that's never changed. Because the truth is, the church, in my estimation, never closed. The spirit never stopped. Because being the body was never a choice. Despite the church's limitations or challenges throughout history, God has continued to redeem the world through the greater body of Christ. Not even a pandemic can change that. Which reminded me of a saying I had somehow forgotten. Perhaps in the individualized world we had created before all of this, I had even begun to question its truth. The saying goes, the smartest person in the room is the room. Which if Paul is right, makes a lot of sense. Because that means that no matter your socioeconomic status, your gender, your race, your age, your political affiliation, your vulnerability to a virus, your orientation, your ethnicity, no matter who you are, you matter. Your voice matters. Your life matters. The body is incomplete without me and without you. And what if we didn't just say this were true or even believe it to be true? What if we actually lived this truth. How different might our world look as we emerge from this crisis if, in fact, we lived as the body, each of us, with our unique gifts, all essential to the well-being of one another? Might we wear masks not just to protect ourselves, but to protect our neighbor? Might we social distance not just to keep ourselves from getting infected, 
but to keep others from being infected. Might we begin to create a world in which we finally recognize once and for all that we are one. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. What crazy, uncertain times we are living in. Laura, Kate, and I have taken great comfort in being able to tune in online to worship with everyone each week. We are so grateful for everyone's hard work and participation in making this all possible. I think our attendance has been 100% perfect. And no one will ever know. <laughs> Even though we can't be physically together, there are so many ways that we can share God's love and care for each other and our community. Praying and connecting by phone or, or video chats are just a couple of ways. I know that people have been pretty creative sending cards and having coffee hours, drive-by birthdays, Zoom celebrations, Bible studies, book clubs. Uh, anything is possible. So in addition to this support, our church needs our financial support. And we've been able to give and to, and to share the good news of Jesus Christ, witnessing, loving, and serving from our doorsteps to the ends of the earth, just like the disciples after Pentecost. So there are several ways that we can support our church. We can mail in checks to 
Sandy Springs Christian Church, we can set up payments through our banks, go online, drop off bags of money. Uh, but just click on the online link, which is sandysprings.org. And sandyspringscc.org. Ah, sandyspringscc.org. And give generously. So thank you very much for this opportunity to say hello. And now we'd like to pray. So let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, creator of all things, thank you for the many blessings and abundance that you have given us. Just as James says in the Bible, we know that all that is good comes from you. Please help us to shine your light to others and give us a spirit of joyful generosity. We also pray for your strength, hope, and peace to fill us in this crazy time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. See you all soon. We love you. Hopefully. Bye. Hey, photo bomber. As I thought about communion this week, my whole life now seems to go around movies. I'm living in Groundhog Day. Every day is the same. And I try to get through this every day. And I think about once I step out of this, where am I going to go to fit in? Is anything going to fit anymore? It's a little scary, and I'm trying to work through it all. But I have to think that, that God says that, that we're all going to fit in, so I just have to keep believing that, that I'm going to step out of this movie, and I'm going to fit in somewhere after Groundhog's Day. But then the next thing is I'm grateful. I'm grateful that my family's healthy, that our friends are healthy, and that things are okay from that perspective. I'm grateful that I am connected. And then we get to go to the Wizard of Oz. I miss you most of all. But I miss you most of all. I miss you most of all. I miss you most of all. It's funny how the word you is both singular and plural. So I get to live in that movie for a while. And then, and then the next thing I just remember is I get to just breathe. And know that in this promise of connection, that it's all going to be okay. And I've just got to trust that the when it's going to be okay, it's all good. And that, that, that it's just going to be fine. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, while we know you did not cause this pandemic, we have watched you seize this opportunity to remind us of what is important. As we eat this bread and drink this cup, allow this food to nourish our memories, keeping a balance between what our lives were before and what we are learning through this process. Amen. On the night that Jesus was to be betrayed, he met with his disciples in an upper room. He took bread, he blessed it, and he broke it, saying, This is my body given to you. Take, eat. After supper, he took a cup and he filled it saying, this is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for the forgiveness of sins, for that when you eat this bread and you drink from this cup, you remember me.
Now, there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. Go in peace this day. Amen.